Hey there everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to play Alkirke. I believe that's how you pronounce it. If it's not how you pronounce it, please correct me in the comments below. To play this game, you set up a 4x4 grid on any medium you wish, such as paper, you can use leather, you can use cloth with paint, you can use wood, stone, whatever you prefer. Then you have a set number of playing pieces. So. Your total, <clears throat> excuse me, your total playing pieces will be 12 for each player. And what you're going to do is you're going to set up the two back rows for each player. And all the pieces go on the corners, not in the squares. And then the two pieces to the player's right. So if black was sitting across from me, their right would be this side. That's where their pieces go. Now white's going to do the same thing. And you'll notice that it leaves the space in the middle open. So Alkirke is the predecessor of drafts or checkers. And it plays very, very similar where you're going to be jumping pieces and moving pieces around. It dates back to at least the 10th century, though the rules were never documented back then. The rules weren't documented until the Moors brought the game to Spain and it was documented in the Libro de los Juegos or the Book of Games by Alfonso X of Castile and the way the game it play, plays is as follows players will take turns moving a piece one adjacent space so you can move this way this way or if you're in the middle place you can go on the angles just following a line you must move one adjacent space now once somebody does there's the option to capture a piece so black would move here white would say hey I want that piece jump over it just like in checkers and you take that piece off the board that piece is no longer going to be in play play will continue that way until one player no longer has pieces on the board. One other rule is that if there is an opportunity to capture a piece, you must take it. If you don't notice it or you choose not to take it, then your opponent can remove one of your pieces in an action called huffing. So let's say the board is like this. It's white's turn. White moves here, doesn't capture a piece. Now, black knows that white could have taken this piece, so black calls it out. Hey, you could have taken that piece. This piece gets huffed and taken off the board, so you lose a piece by not capturing. Now, if you do have, the way I've always played this, is if you have more than one opportunity to capture a piece. So let's say the board was like this. Well, maybe like this. So now I can capture this way, and I can capture this way, and I can capture this way. So only one of those is going to work. But the object really is, is that you did capture the piece. So even though there's multiple ways to capture it, I can still capture it. So one of my pieces would not get huffed. If there's chances to capture multiple pieces, so long as a piece is captured, it should not allow huffing. Now when this game was documented by R.C. Bell, he decided that the current rules did not allow for competitive enough play. So he came up with a few additional rules that are considered alternatives. You can choose to play this way, you can choose not to play this way. One rule is that you can't move backwards. So if I was to move this piece up, I couldn't then move this piece back because you don't want to move back toward yourself. You can only move side to side or forwards. Because of that rule, you can't just limit play or, or victory conditions rather based on taking all of your opponent's pieces because you could very well have your opponent get its pieces to your last row, in which case they're stuck there and they can only move side to side and your pieces might be on the last row, in which case your pieces are stuck there, 
so you can't continue to capture. At that point, the person with the most pieces left over wins. If they're tied, then the game results in a tie. Uh, one other rule to go with that is you can't move a piece back to the, a spot where it already was. So if I move this way, I couldn't then my next turn move that way back to where I originally was. So this keeps think people from just moving one piece back and forth, biding their time for another player to make the move that they want them to move, which can often be frustrating when you're playing. Apart from that, that's the game. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you would like to see more of these. And good luck and enjoy.